Hello everyone and welcome back to the podcast. This has been an incredibly intense month. This is my third deep dive for the month of December. And the reason that I've decided to accelerate my pace of work is that I believe the AI revolution is going to happen much more quickly than the market generally believes. People are very focused on price action. We know some people are very impressed with the price action of Palantir stock. People are focused today on what's gonna happen with the interest rates. People are focused on stuff like that. Meanwhile, I'm focused on fundamentals. What I'm seeing is one, AI is advancing very quickly. Two, there are a number of companies which are incredibly well positioned to benefit from the onset of AI. And one of these companies is MongoDB. MongoDB database schema has an edge in AI applications. As more AI apps come to the market, Mongo stands to benefit considerably. And in the rest of this deep dive, I'm going to explain why and some very interesting things towards the end, such as how generative AI stands to exponentiate MongoDB's growth going forward. And this is not clickbait, or anything, I really do think that fundamentally generative AI is going to make growth much, much easier for MongoDB going forward, as has happened with Palantir, with AIP, as I think is going to happen with Okta, as the number of AI agents grows exponentially, etc. So let's get deep into this now. MongoDB seems to have a database architecture that's uniquely suited to the requirements of AI apps. This means that if AI takes off, MongoDB has a considerable runway ahead from its $1.96 billion revenue run rate in the 12 trailing months. Mongo's competitive advantage is the flexibility of its schema, which is considerably higher than that of SQL-based databases. AI applications require complex and rich data structures, together with lots of contextual real-time data to work. While SQL databases are good for Web 2.0 apps, they don't quite work for AI ones. SQL stands for Structured Query Language, and it allows developers to retrieve and store data into databases made of tables. These tables are rich and once you build an application, changing the structure of these tables is usually a nightmare. AI applications have to deal with different data types, source data, vector data, metadata, and generated data, right alongside your life operational data. Additionally, AI applications run on inference, which means that minimizing latency is critical. Optimizing latency for an AI application is a near impossible task for SQL databases, which means that once AI applications take off, we should see MongoDB rise in popularity. As you can see in the graph below, SQL databases are still the most popular among developers. This is because Web 2.0 applications still account for the majority of apps on the market and AI applications still haven't taken off with companies spending most of their AI capex on infrastructure. MongoDB CEO Dev Itichiria explained this during the Q3 fiscal year 2025 earnings call. Here's what he said. At the start of the fiscal year, we told you that we didn't expect AI to be a meaningful tailwind for our business in fiscal year 20, 2025, which has proven accurate. Companies are currently focusing their spending on the infrastructure layer of AI and are still largely experimenting with AI applications. It's notable that even though AI applications haven't arrived to the market, Mongo is still the most popular database after the dominant SQL types, MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQLite, and Microsoft SQL Server. Mongo is far more popular among developers than alternatives from larger companies such as Oracle, Amazon with their DynamoDB, Snowflake and Databricks, which tentatively points to an innovation stack kind of situation, which many of you are now familiar with. Basically, the innovation stack is when you have a company that's smaller than its much larger competitors, but it's so focused on a single task that that actually ends up amounting into a moat. And so even though that company starts out with much less resources and with all the odds against it, it ends up working. That called the innovation stack, and that term was coined by Block co-founder Jim McKelvey. Indeed, in fiscal year 2016, MongoDB brought in just $65.3 million in revenue. It has nonetheless managed to fend off competition from Oracle and Amazon, coming in just behind Microsoft in terms of popularity. In Q4 2017, AWS CEO at the time, Andy Jassy, said that Mongo was quote-unquote kicking butt on AWS, and since Mongo has increased its revenue 29-fold. Dev Itichiria has been Mongo's CEO since 2014, and although he's not a founder operator, the company has done quite well under his watch. This track record is further indicative of the competitive advantage of Mongo's database schema. It's also indicative 
perspective of an organizational ability to iterate on the schema and the overall platform faster than competitors, such as Amazon's DynamoDB. The combination makes Mongo a company worth watching as AI apps make their way to the market. Mongo is also an interesting barometer to gauge whether AI infrastructure spend does equate into useful apps or not that actually drive value. For now, AI apps are not gaining widespread traction, and that's worth keeping an eye on by itself. Mongo CEO Itichiria shared some valuable insights in the Q3 fiscal year 2025 earnings call. Here's what he said. What we don't yet see is many of these apps actually achieving meaningful product market fit and therefore significant traction. In fact, as you take a step back and look at the entire universe of AI apps, a very small percentage of them have achieved the type of scale that we commonly see with enterprise-specific applications. We do have some AI apps that are growing quickly, including one that is already a seven-figure workload that has grown 10x since the beginning of the year. However, in Q1 fiscal year 2025, consumption growth of their database services grew slower than expected, and in my view, the communication around the problem was quite poor. At the start of the earnings call, management could not quite pinpoint whether the slowdown was due to macroeconomic or internal factors. Towards the end of the call, the CFO defaulted to saying that it was largely due to internal factors. In Q3 fiscal year 2025, CEO Itichiria announced that the CFO was leaving the company. The stock is currently down 47% since the call, even though cash from operations has been growing considerably, as you can see in the graph above. Cash from operations is the line in blue. Although this looks like an opportunity, the Q1 incident dampens my view of the management team. Growth has resumed following the Q1 slowdown, but the management of the situation back in Q1 was anemic, and this makes it hard for me to invest in the company when there's other companies with extraordinary management teams, such as Palantir, AMD, Tesla, and Hims. And you can find deep dives on these companies, which I happen to own, by the way, here on my YouTube channel, on X, Substack, Spotify, you name it. Despite the popularity, with developers, Mongo still has low single digit market share. By rolling out their community product first and then adding features that work to their enterprise operation, Mongo fosters a great relationship with developers and is able to leverage a bottoms up approach to sales. Developers have great power within organizations when it comes to deciding what tools will be used. The strength of this distribution channel is the main driver of the financial performance over the past decade, together with the superiority of the database schema. Now, here's where we get into a part of the deep dive which in my view is far more interesting perhaps than Mongo's apparent competitive advantage and that is the fact that generative AI paves the path for exponential growth for Mongo the same way that it's done for Palantir and the same way that it's likely to do so for Okta which I covered last week. Now let's get deep into it. To change your database schema you often have to rewrite your entire application code. The cost of rewriting apps is what has stalled Mongo's growth in the past making it harder for companies to update their legacy systems. Generative AI is now making that process far easier, exponentially reducing costs over time. In turn, Mongo sees the highest ROI in the enterprise channel. This means that Mongo is likely to accelerate its distribution and increase margins as generative AI gets better. Much like Okta, as I was previously saying, this is looking like an instance of the NVIDIA algorithm. And many of you that have been watching my videos and reading my deep dives for a while will be familiarized with that. This is the operational framework that explains some of the most remarkable corporate triumphs of this era like NVIDIA and Palantir. This powerful mental model is part of the framework that I teach students of my Goldmine course that I use to pick winners early and hold them through the ups and downs when people give up on them to then obtain my long-term multi-bagger returns. And you can access the course via the show's footnotes. When an organization dedicates decades to advancing a technology that dramatically improves humanity's capacity to process information or leverage energy, a sudden technological leap that makes distribution distribution far easier can ignite exponential growth that appears to rise out of nowhere. In truth, these companies laid the groundwork long before reaching their critical turning points, as has been the case with Nvidia and Palantir more recently. Mongo is executing the Nvidia algorithm as you can see depicted in the graph below. They have been working on a superior database schema since 2007. Now the rise of AI makes their schema even more useful and makes migration exponentially more convenient for customers, as the cost of writing code with AI drops. If Mongo's database is as hard to replicate as progression of financials over the past decade seems to suggest, generative AI is likely to multiply Mongo's earning power over the coming years. In Q1 fiscal year 2025, Mongo completed two modernization pilots enabled by generative AI, which allegedly greatly reduced the time, cost, and risk of modernizing legacy 
applications. Management stated in the same earnings call that they believe the pilots reduced the effort required to migrate from a legacy system to Mongo schema by 50%. In the Q2 fiscal year 2025 earnings call, CEO Ititiria shared some insights on how this changes the game for Mongo. Notice how he uses the term sudden, which perfectly captures how the NVIDIA algorithm yields exponential growth, seemingly out of nowhere. So what's been compelling about AI is that AI has finally created a shortcut to overcome that big hurdle. Um, and so essentially you can start basically diagnosing the code, understand the code, um, you know, recreate a modern version of that code and generate test suites to make sure the new code performs uh, like the old code. So that definitely gets people's interest because now all of a sudden what may take you know, years or multi-years you can do in a lot less time. And the pilots that we have uh, done, the, the time and cost savings have been very, very compelling. According to management, the enterprise channel exceeded expectations in Q3 fiscal year 2025. CEO Itachiria shared in the call that results from the pilots are driving quote-unquote additional customer interest, which is exceeding expectations. It's interesting to see how the onset of the pilots correlates with the rapidly improving cash flow profile, which I include again below for your convenience. The blue line represents the leveraged free cash flow and the orange line represents cash from operations. And you can see how both are increasing quite rapidly since the start of natural year 2023. Although OPEX as a percentage of revenue has declined from 85.72% to 79.2% year over year, there are no mentions of efficiency measures on the respective earnings calls. However, in the last two quarters, Mongo is also leaning on the enterprise channel more by investing more heavily on enterprise sales in an effort to move up market. It thus seems that the improved cash flow profile is primarily a result of stronger attraction on the enterprise side, which bodes well for pilots. The dynamic that I've been explaining in this section of the deep dive should make the rise of AI apps far more creative to Mongo by making distribution easier and thus converting more revenue to the bottom line. Over the coming few years, the pilots will likely become increasingly productized, as has been the case with Palantir's AIP bootcamps. The latter started off as highly manual live events and are now increasingly something anyone can do anytime, anywhere. Should Mongo's pilots go down a similar path, generative AI should put Mongo on an exponential growth trajectory. I also found it extremely interesting to see that MongoDB's customers are pursuing proprietary data moats and that that is one of the primary motivations for them to move away from their legacy infrastructure stacks towards MongoDB's novel form of database schema. According to the CEO, one of the main reasons for which companies are modernizing their applications is to leverage their proprietary data. One of the main premises I teach in my tech stock gold course, which you should take if you want to learn to analyze companies like I do and pick winners like I do, is that proprietary data will be the moat of the 21st century. Having data that no one else has enables you to train AI models that no one else can and thus stay competitive. With AI getting exponentially better every month, the only way to stay alive is therefore by having a data advantage. Here's what CEO Dev Itichiria said about Mongo customers pursuing proprietary data moats in Q2 fiscal year 2025. Fourth, because Gen AI is so predicated on data and to build a competitive advantage, you need to leverage your proprietary data. People want to access that data and be able to do so easily. The other thing that I found interesting is that Itichiria believes general purpose LLMs, large language models, will win. He also believes that people will train these models on their own proprietary data to then differentiate their own models. When I wrote my check deep dive earlier this month, I was thinking more along the lines of companies training their own LLMs from scratch. And so I welcome opening my mind up to this possibility. It will probably help me read competitive environments better. Here's what Itichiria said about this during the Q2 fiscal year 2025. Earnings um, you know, there are some questions about LLMs, whether a general purpose LLM or a fine tuned LLM, um, what the trade offs are. Um, our belief is that given the performance of LLMs, you're going to see um, the general purpose LLMs probably win and, uh, and will use RAG as the uh, predominant approach to marry you know, generally available data with proprietary data. 
Essentially, a RAG, written R-A-G, is a method via which AI retrieves relevant information from an external source to generate more accurate and context-aware responses. R-A-G, RAG, stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation, and it looks like we'll be seeing plenty of it over the coming decade. After all, why build a new model from scratch when you can use one that already masters natural language and simply teach it a differentiating skill set? The cost of the latter option is bound to be lower, thus probably yielding better unit economics. RAG, RAG, works by combining two key steps, one, retrieval, two, generation. When a user asks a question, the AI first searches an external knowledge base or document store to retrieve relevant information. It then feeds both the original question and the retrieved data into a language model, which then generates a response that combines the contextual understanding of the query with the factual content derived from the sources. This approach ensures more accurate, current, and context-aware answers while reducing the model's reliance on outdated or limited internal knowledge. My conclusion is that I like MongoDB, but I need to learn more about databases in order to invest in this company. Although Q1 fiscal year 2025 makes me question the strength of the management team, Mongo's financial performance over the past decade is suggestive of a strong technical moat. In turn, the rise of AI is set to benefit Mongo in two key ways. One, by increasing the demand for its flexible database schema, and two, by making migration to it exponentially easier. This promises to more than 10x revenue again over the coming decade while yielding higher margins. Additionally, as the generative AI-driven pilots get productized over time, this should generate a proprietary sub data set, which will likely enable Mongo to further automate migrations in a way which will be increasingly harder to replicate. Over the long term, this flywheel can potentially increase Mongo's earning power far beyond current expectations. The major risk in the thesis is that Mongo gets disrupted by another player that is capable somehow of providing a more flexible database schema at a lower cost that therefore developers in the AI space come to like more. For now, I don't see a notable competitor in this sense, but in technology, there's always a lot that we don't know. I need to learn more about databases to truly discern Mongo's competitive position, although as previously mentioned, the data does point to an innovation stack scenario whereby this company, which is much smaller than its larger competitors, has the organizational ability to delight end consumers more in a way that ultimately creates a moat. In the meantime, I look forward to continue tracking Mongo quarterly. And as always, if you enjoyed this deep dive, can I please ask you one favor? Can you please share this with one friend whom you think will enjoy it? These deep dives are for free. And so the only way this grows is with your help. Thank you very much. Take care. And until next time.